In this video, I'm going to be going beyond the typical inner loop of the software development lifecycle that I usually focus on within my videos. Oftentimes within my videos, I'll use a lot of the new coding tools, whether it's Cursor, V0, or similar sort of tools to rapidly prototype and iterate an idea. This process from creating an idea to coding it out to deploying it is commonly known as the inner loop of the software development lifecycle. But there's more to software development than what happens on a developer's local machine. I've partnered with Patch to highlight their open source workflow automation tool for dev teams. What Patch allows you to do is to create AI workflows to automate code reviews, docs, and patches. So in my last video, I ran through building out a really quick example of an AI web app leveraging Cursor, V0, and some other technologies. And once I was done the coding portion, I leveraged Patch to write the README. And you're able to do this all within just a couple clicks. So I'm gonna take it a step further and I'm gonna be showing you how you can integrate this in further aspects of that outer loop of the software development lifecycle. To get started, you can make an account on Patched and then you can set it up with either your GitLab or your GitHub account. And then once those are set up, you'll be able to manage your repositories. So to add a repository, it's as easy as going to repositories and then you can add it there. Once you've started to add repositories, you'll see them here. On the patch flow page, you'll see a bunch of different predefined patch flows. Things like generate a doc string, generate a readme, PR review, autofix, generate code style, or PR review with a style MD. Within my LLM answer project here, you'll see that this file was generated with patch. With a couple clicks, you can generate a code style guideline that adheres to the particular conventions that you follow within your repository. Next, I'm going to show you how you can leverage a style.m and how you can have future PRs conform to your code style guidelines. To demonstrate, I'm going to be adding support for DuckDuckGhost to the LLM answer project here. And what we have here is we have two different providers. We have one for DuckGhost search, and then we also have a provider that's leveraging the SERP API. Now where the issue is that the function isn't declared with the particular style of formatting set within the style.md, I have the camel case convention set up. And as you see here, we have the snake case convention for these two particular functions. I'm gonna go ahead and add these changes to the file. And then once we have that, we're going to git commit and then add support. I'm gonna just push to the GitHub repository here. Then if I go up here, once we have that new branch, what I can do here is I can open up the pull request. Then I'm just going to add the title as the description as well here. Now that a PR has been submitted, what we can do to see if it adheres to that style, that MD, I can go ahead and click this patch button here and I can go down to the PR review with style MD. And then here it's going to automatically populate all of the different pull requests that are within the repository. Here we see that new add DuckDuckGo support. If I just click that, and I run this patch flow. Once the patch flow has run, you can go ahead and you can click details. You'll see all of your patch flow runs within this list here. Here we see the PR review with the style MD. I can go over and I can check the PR here with just a couple clicks. Now, if we look at the PR review, what it will do here is it's gonna create a comment for the PR. And here we see that it doesn't follow the naming convention of camel case, it's using snake case instead. It's going to show you the affected code snippet as well as what line it starts on. It caught the second one here. Now, in addition to it not following the naming convention, it also can catch things like if you left a debugger statement before it actually gets merged within the production code, it's going to flag that. And here it's gonna say this is not best practice and it should be removed before deployment. And then again, it's gonna show you the snippet of the code block that's affected as well as the start and end line for it. I'm gonna take this a step further and we're gonna run the resolve PR review patch flow. And I'm gonna select the branch of add DuckDuckGo support. And then we're going to run it on this particular pull request again. Once this patch flow has run, we'll see a new PR here. Now we see instead of using the snake case naming convention, it is successfully using the camel case convention. And then in addition to that, if I search for debugger, we do see that right below the response here, it has also removed the debugger as well. One thing to note with all of the different patch flows that I'm showing you here is you can run these on particular triggers. Say for instance, you want to run a PR review with the style MD on every PR creation. It's as easy as a couple clicks there. As soon as you set that up, anytime someone submits a PR, it's going to run that and it's going to give the comment with the feedback that you just saw in the earlier example. Now, if you wanna create your own patch flow, you can go over to patch flows here. You can click add patch flow. So the cool thing with this 
is you can actually define and get the starting point of your patch flow that you want to create from natural language. What I can do here is I can just say reads the provided pull request and the me.md file from the root of the repo, then updates the readme contents based on the contents of the pull request. So here you can configure the different inputs. Since one of the inputs is the PR selection, we're going to just tick that here, but you can also do this for branches or issues as well. So we're going to click generate draft, and then we're going to go ahead and create the draft for our patch flow. This is what the interface looks like to build out your patch flow. So I'll just zoom in a little bit here so you can see. So what this is going to do is first, we're going to read the readme file, which is at the root of the directory. Then we're going to read the pull request. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to combine those outputs. And why we're combining that is because with the LLM, we have to pass in the entire context. So then we're going to specify you're an AI assistant tasked with updating a readme file based on the contents of a pull request. Analyze the pull requests and the current readme content, and then generate an updated version of the readme that incorporates the changes and the new information from the pull request. And then there's the detailed structure of the user prompt. You can go in here and tweak this as you see fit. Now, the one thing with the way that this is set up is it's JSON in and JSON out. If I want to connect this to the next node here, what I'll have to do is say something like read me and I'll just say read me. What this will do is this is going to pass to the next node. So you can select Claude 3.5 Sonnet or GPT-40 Mini or GPT-40. And what we can do here is you do have the ability to hide inputs or show inputs if you'd like. So here I'll just hide the start line here. And then we have our file path of what we're reading. And then what you can do is if you click that button there, you can select the reference of what you defined here. Here we see the JSON schema of what it's mapping to. But say if I swap this out to read me more, for instance, you'll see that it will clear that reference and you'll have to select that new one. That's the mapping between each node there. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to create our pull request. So we can create a branch prefix. And then here, similar to before, what we can do is we can specify the path variable. And then here we can say this is a PR that updates the readme file and then the PR title and what have you. We can go ahead and save that. And once we've saved it out, we can just go back to our repositories and we can run that. So it's as easy as that. If you want to edit the patch flow or make it more complicated, you can just go ahead and grab the nodes. You'll be able to connect them just by tying them to the previous node, and then it will invoke the particular method based on the inputs. And similarly for the output, you can just connect it to subsequent nodes just like that. Once you're done with your patch flow, you can go ahead and save this. You can validate it. Essentially, you can run it for the first time. And then you also have the ability to export this. In terms of next steps, I'll link within the description their documentation here where you'll be able to see all the different steps that I showed you within the video. And then also, if you want to take it a step further and begin to integrate this, within whether it's your local environment or as a part of a CI CD pipeline. And there are steps to do all of that as well within here. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.